to D. We are playing a 1v1 match on a beautiful map down here in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 between Isengard and Rohan, the Ritter Mark against the White Hand, just like in the films. And Danhero is a very good map. By the way, that's also gonna be like a revenge match from yesterday's match between Isengard and Mordor. We lost as Isengard against Mordor yesterday against the same player. And I was not happy about it, but I know you guys were happy about it because for whatever reason, you guys like to see me lose. But I will have to disappoint you because I'm not planning to lose this one. Trust me on that one, guys. And the distance between the castle from Rohan and our castle is a long distance. And for that reason, we can actually afford to open with double furnaces. And I'm also planning to rush Warg Pit and recruit Warg Riders. That is going to be the plan. And, and even though that's like a big map, there are like two pathways. And if we can guess the pathway of the opponent right, we can actually use the only starting unit we have, the Urukai, with the Warchant to defend ourselves in the long term against two, three, even four peasants. Okay, I mean, that's good, that's good. We can actually fight this, no problemo. I mean, we can use Warchan here just to make sure that we are not taking too much damage while fighting him. And with the workers from the mill behind the case, behind the castle, we can also capture the additional settlements on the map down here. Oh, he's trying to beat us, but... Dude, I'm not a beginner player. What are you trying to do? <laughs> this guy... <laughs> This guy is actually mind gaming me, but he will actually crash himself. I'm not planning to lose my Uruks there, trust me on that one. So let's get the second or the third settlement at the top right corner. And again, the plan is to rush the Warg Pit. But before we're gonna do that, we need to definitely build some more furnaces. Just to make sure that we have enough money. And because the worst thing that can happen to you, and what you don't want to happen is... That if you build a Warg Pit, that you have no money to recruit a Warg Rider right off the bat. For that reason, it's me, you know, making sure that you have enough money and resource income is essential in this game. I mean, the classical peasant spam, our war chain is going to be off very soon. It means we won't be able to win this fight. But it's okay, as long as we can keep them away from the settlement for a little bit, we will also get a little bit more um, wood bonus, getting cheaper buildings inside the castle. That's very good and denying him to get the third settlement, which is even like a win-win situation. So I was able to stall. Obviously, I was not able to win this. But as we have the Urukai under our control, we can always choose to disengage whenever we want to. And by the way, war drivers are actually pretty underrated. Especially early game, when the Rohirrim have no armor and they have no leadership. We have the Warchant. Plus the whole ability from the Warcliders, which is you know, making them way, way stronger in compared to the Rohirrim. And with the Palantir, we can actually chase and hunt them down. They won't be able to disengage, because Palantir will give you additional movement speed. So in long terms, obviously, the Warcliders are going to fall off against Rohirrim, because they get so much support from Theorin, Glorious Charge, Eomer leadership. But early mid-game, they are actually quite reliable, because if you choose to get Uruk Pit and spam Pikemen against Rohan, Rohan can simply counter that by recruiting additional peasants from the farms outside so you will have to against rohan definitely start not start but you will have to at some point of the game recruit some war carriers and that's a phenomenal start i'm telling you we have four settlements and for that reason look at our castle we are full on charge and if you don't hurt isengard's economy early on as rohan or gondor holy guacamole guys Isengard is going to shine bright like a diamond. I'm getting hungry. Fix that attitude of yours. Workers! There will be no slacking here. Can I beat him actually into the troll there? That would be awesome. Come on, follow me, follow me. <laughs> this troll, fo troll, come on now, please. Oh, he has Rohirrim, but we can actually chase them down. Unfortunately, we have not the Palantir yet, but it's okay. I will also definitely recruit Lourdes. I'm a, I'm a player. When I play Isengard, I actually like to recruit Lourdes early on. Just to make sure that I get a couple of creeps with Lourdes. And get them to level 3, 4 power spank. Because what you need to try to do when you have Lourdes on the field is to get them to level 5. That's very important. Because in many matchups, Isengard will need in long terms the additional DPS and damage leadership from the fighting Urukai Lourdes. And as we place many of these workers inside the ruined towers, we're actually getting a lot of vision. We can use Warchant, 
can never fight us anymore. Let's use them to kill these peasants. And, dude, dude, that's an amazing start. So I'm assuming we have a lot of money. And with that, we can even get maybe upgrades faster than him. So after the third warp ride, I'm planning to demolish the warp pit and make the transition into the armory. He has like three farms. He has one at the top right side and two at his own side of the map. So we are definitely in a good spot. We can also keep this protected, no problem. And Lords can creep the troll layer to get from level one all the way to level three. Just some towers, you know, better safe than sorry. Now, nice, that's good. We can also creep this right off the bat. It's even better, get even more money, more money, more money. Isengard actually has a lot of eco, but to be fair, Isengard also needs a lot of eco because our armory is gonna cost us, cost us 1200. All the upgrades plus the thing that you actually, you know, upgrade them, have to upgrade them on your units is the most expensive from all four factions. So for that reason, you gotta make sure that you have a great amount of map control when you play Isengard, which is, let's be real, not the hardest thing in the world, because you have the, st the strongest starting units in the game. And especially with double furnace opening like we did, it's quite easy. Okay, we got level 2 with Lords. We have now the Palantir. Let's fight for the map control in the meantime. I want to actually cripple him. Maybe I can beat him into my lords and cripple him. But I want to also be finishing this one. Because even if I cripple him when my lords is only level 2, I cannot really fight against him. I want to use Palantir and keep chasing them down. We have also now the Blades and Heavy Armor is incoming too. He might go for the base rush, but I don't think it's going to be a good choice. Because he has no upgrades yet. And we have towers plus war riders chasing them down. So I'm assuming he needs to, yeah, he needs to definitely retreat. What is Theodin doing? <laughs> He's like... We shall make peace, you know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, guys, I don't understand why Lord of the Rings decided to cut some parts out of the films. You know what I'm saying? In the extended edition, you see so much awesome stuff. Uh, like, for example, in the third film, The Return of the King, what was happening is, at the beginning of the film, you saw what happened to Saruman. The conversation between Saruman, Gandalf, and Theodin. So when actually Saruman was saying, let's make peace, and Theodin was quite upset about that, and also Gandalf blocking the fireball with the shield bubble. This was actually quite epic. I don't know why actually uh, Peter Jackson or the filmmakers didn't decide to implement this into the non-cut or non-extended edition. I don't know why. I think this, this scene was quite epic. You wanna fight this? My works are hungry, King Theodin. My works are hungry. Dude, you see how much pressure we are creating? Because normally in this matchup, Isengard is supposed to play a bit more defensively against Rohan. But with the War Riders, we can actually deny that. And as we are talking, we are creating a brand new meta. Russian War Riders, I mean, you cannot do that every single time. You know, the reason why I did that in this map is because I knew in this map I can at least, at bare minimum, keep the settlement behind my castle protected. It means I would have a great resource income no matter what. And it worked out, but on a map like Forts of Ice, it would be definitely way more risky because you would potentially keep losing your settlements all the time. Oh, 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 he's paying attention. That was close. The reason why I'm able to win this fight is because I have heavy armor plus Forge Blades. He didn't have that. Okay, so we have two power points collected. Let's pick up the industry and use it. Uh, I actually want to rush. Uh, Saruman, before making army. So let's go for the White Wizard, Saruman the Wise. And that's dope, actually. Our loot is all, all about to level, you know, get level 5. You see how important it is? Because against factions like Rohan and Mortar, Warchan is not going to be enough in long term to out sustain and out leadership the enemy army. So Rohan, when you have only Warchan, will have more leadership than you have. Mordor, anyway. And especially against Mordor, it's essential to burst down those trolls, Nazgûl, Falbis, Witch King, Uma kills way, way faster. Uh, thank you so much for the follow on the Twitch channel, appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Nice, so Lourdes is level 5 boys, it's dope. Um, and we are gonna get Saruman very soon. I mean, the money is not looking that great, but it's gonna be changed very soon. We are also investing a lot of money into the outpost. 
And on this map, you have actually four outposts, two on each side, top side two, and also bottom side two. And that's good for the evil factions because evil factions like to buy those outposts and build furnaces. Oh, <laughs> Palantir. Oh, we killed the Hobbit Meriadoc Brandybuck. Hopefully, Peregrine Took is not going to be upset about this one. And if he is, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Who cares? Okay, boys, they're great. I mean, dude, alone the fact that we can keep Rohan here in front of his own castle is such a win-win situation for us. That's all we, we need to do because we are scaling. Look, our money is rising to the sky. Now we have enough money to recruit the White, white Wizard and then we can make an army. And during all this time, he couldn't manage to get to our castle one single time. He tried once, but it was not successful. And now if he would come, he would have Saruman to defend us anyway. So he needs to be careful because my Lord is level 5 and I will always try to cripple down the King of Rohan. And the second he got crippled, he cannot move. And that's going to be like a great situation for us. Because then we can draw the sword, use Carnage and take him out. And our money, dude. I mean, against Rohan and Gondor, especially with Isengard. Guys, you need to keep in mind that Isengard is a very fast faction. And you don't want to get too much into the late game. Remember what happened... The other day when I was not able to finish off Mordor early game. The longer the game goes on, the more you will... Oh, look at them. Look at them. You want a cup? Come, come, come. Hey, hey, hey. Dude, I can read you like a book, Rambo. They're attacking us. Saruman will be pleased. Oh, Theodin. Oh, Theodin. Go, Theodin. 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 Cripple him. I'm going to miss it. Good lords. You disappointed me yesterday to loot. Stop it. Stop it. You get this. Boom. Dude. Saruman the Wise is showing his quality. Unlike Faramir. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what I have actually for a problem with Faramir. I don't know. Oh, I don't want to quit the game though. Let's trust me on that one. Okay. So we need to definitely start sieging very soon. But first of all, let's make some combos. So, you know, let's make at least one combo. Then we can buy the outpost at the bottom left side and start sieging the Rohan player with the Palista. And go inside the jeans. That's the plan. You don't want to give Rohan too much time because that's the thing. If you have a lead, you want to close the game ASAP. You know, if you don't close the game against good factions, without Siege, they will also get stronger, stronger, stronger. And the gap between you in terms of leading and your opening is going to be smaller, 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 smaller. And you give him actually like a crazy comeback potential. And we don't want to do that. You know, we want to finish this game. We don't want to lose twice in two days in a row. That's not... The plan. The wolves are hungry. We've expanded the earth's pits. Dope, dope, dope. Dude, they are so rich, man. They are like, they are like Bill Gates. You know what I'm saying? Bill Gates of Middle Earth, guys. That's how rich we are. So let's put them inside the jeans to have some protection for the outpost, around the outpost. Even though the Rohirrim, they are quite tanky against that. But it looks like he has no shields yet. Without shields, it's going to be hard for him to defend himself. Oh, okay. That's good for me. Dude, I take it. I take it every day of the week. Thank you very much. So my Warchan is way less cooldown than his Elven Wood. And that's going to give me the, now the, freedom, uh, the freedom to actually comment, uh, commit on his castle without having, the, having to fear that he might com commit on us with like an Elven Wood play. And that's on cooldown now. That means he has nothing to do against my Isengard army. Win-win situation. Okay, so let's bring the army Warfare of Mordor to the down. Um, and dude, a lot, guys, you see, offense is the best defense. I mean, hopefully this game was actually like a like a great tool about how to play this matchup as Isengard against good factions like Gondor and Rohan. You want to play aggressively. You don't want to be in a in a turtle situation. Because the more aggressive you play, the more pressure you create on his castle, the more defensively he has to play, which means you get money, money, money every single time and you can afford to lose stuff if you defend and you lose stuff you will have the struggle and the limitation of in terms of resources to actually revive your heroes uh, rebuild your army remember isengard army is quite expensive and for that reason we need to have a lot of money to actually make one single combo so making one single combo between uruka and crossbowman is going to cost you around about 2000 and losing that is obviously quite painful Let's take him for a run. 
And my Vork Riders actually are the MVPs of this game. And let the siege begin, boys. Saruman and Lords, they do they gotta do nothing but keep standing here and defend. We have 4,000 in the bank. We can even go for like three Uruk pits, but we have two. That's gonna be enough for now. Don't lose the level two Vork Rider. We have no more. Oh, the fireball on your face, son. Okay, kill him, kill him. Oh, he's using the heal. Ah, smart move from him to actually take down the siege works from with a sneaky attack from behind. But it, it's okay, we have already one barista, and that's all, all we need. Now we can actually break one part of the wall of Rohan and go inside. Unless he has enough money to repair it. That's a very smart move, actually, from him. I gotta give him this one. We have also no pikemen around, but we have enough leadership. Fight for me, and I will reward you. Nice, dude. Okay, nice. Oh, here's a level 5 unit. What is he doing? My crossbowman inside. Oh, rest in peace. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. That's good. Dude, I don't know why, but the people, they are underestimating the... Oh, my war rider was actually in tank. Okay. They are underestimating the defense power of the Rohan army. So if you see Isengard coming to you that early, what you need to do is build a statue, uh, have Theodin, like 3 4 Rohirrim guys, trust me. The defense possibility from the Rohan castle is definitely not, not too shabby. You can definitely defend yourself. Oh my, oh my goodness. He's trying to... Oh, oh, cripple him. Oh my, cripple him. I will lose my... Dude, I'm sleeping on this one. Lords, lords, lords. But it's okay. I mean, we can now just go inside. We have used the war chant. Now is the time for us to commit. Let's go inside the jeans. Look, our units are shining bright like a diamond. So much leadership. Saruman, Lords, plus Warchant. Very, very strong. We have almost full map control, guys. That's gonna be the final push. And that, ladies and gentlemen, the revenge of yesterday. Revenge taste good. Revenge taste really good. Take this, horseman. The victory is not yours. Theodin, horse master. Throw your sword. Carnage and take down the king of Rohan, Lord. The fighting Urukai is showing his quality, unlike his uh, rival from the Gondor faction, Faramir. He has one farm, two farms outside, but <laughs> look our money. I mean, you will also see at the end of the game how much more money we had. And that's the power of Isengard, boys. If you get a snowball early on, you can finish off the game's ACP and nothing. Nothing can compete with that. Nothing can compete with the Will of Saruman. GG well played, Rambo. But I had to do this to you, my friend, after what you did to me yesterday on the map Westwall between Mordor and Isengard. And hopefully, I will get the chance to play more games against the player because I think those games are going to be quite fun. And if you guys enjoyed this one, please don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you hopefully tomorrow. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And also, stay beyond Sanders. 52,000 against 20. That's domination, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out.